On June 15, 1991, after more than 400 years of inactivity, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines roared back to life. But not only did it blanket the surrounding landscape in volcanic ash, it also launched dust, sulfur dioxide, and other substances into the stratosphere, where they will orbit for years to come. Almost 10,000 miles away in Seguin, Texas, Forrest Mims III, an amateur scientist, who among many hobbies measures the ozone layer, has noted significant changes. It was the most important volcano eruption of this century in terms of the amount of debris injected into the stratosphere. And there have been a lot of predictions that as much as 30% of the ozone layer could be destroyed by this volcano. Uh, that did not happen. But a very significant amount of ozone has been destroyed, as much as 8 to 10%. And I've been tracking this every day since the volcano erupted. Ozone has been measured on a regular basis since the mid-1920s. But in recent years, its gradual depletion has caused increasing concern. Ozone is a cyclical phenomenon. Uh, it can be very thick one day and thin the next day. A cold front can cause a 20% increase in ozone. So there are constant fluctuations in ozone. But human activity uh, is apparently causing a gradual decline of a few percent per decade in ozone. And that's what people are concerned about. Most of the world's ozone monitoring stations use a Dobson spectrometer. But since they cost $100,000 a time, it's not surprising there aren't many dotted around the world. And that's where Forrest Mims comes in. For no more than $500, he built his own detector, TOPS, short for Total Ozone Portable Spectro Radiometer. It can go anywhere. I measure both tropospheric and stratospheric ozone. Like today, I'm measuring the ozone through the entire Earth's atmosphere by pointing an instrument at the sun, or in the case of today, at the, at the sunny sky through the clouds. 600 nanometers at 925 is at the zenith, 121.9. I measure tropospheric ozone by going to mountains in New Mexico or Hawaii, measuring the ozone at the base of the mountain, then ascending to the summit, measuring the ozone again, and by subtracting one from the other, I can determine the amount of ozone in between, the so-called tropospheric component of the ozone layer. Forrest Mims is a prolific scribe. He's written more than 50 books and some 500 articles. He was also chief editor of Science Probe, the amateur scientist's journal. Not bad for someone with no formal scientific training. Science for me is a, is a hobby. I look at my life as one continuous science fair project. It's the most fun I could ever have. In 1987, one of his many projects won an honorable mention in the Rolex Awards. That award was for a aid for the blind that fits on eyeglasses, and it transmits infrared beams which allow a blind person to detect obstacles out to three or four meters in front of the person, and the change in the tone uh, heard in a small earpiece would enable the blind person to detect obstacles that might uh, strike that person in the head. Six years on, Mims and his latest invention have been making headlines, and not just for his Rolex award. Since the Pinatubo eruption, his findings had differed substantially from NASA's, which monitors ozone from an orbiting satellite. And on the very day we were recording, NASA confirmed it was an error, and Mims's readings from his battery-powered portable detector were correct. NASA does a spectacular job with this satellite data. Uh, they are the most professional scientists I've ever met, but I think that uh, NASA is quite intrigued by the fact that a, a very cheap instrument was able to find this error. Uh, it's not that the satellite has an error, it's that the volcano aerosols have caused an error in the data reduction algorithm, giving it values which are uh, clearly uh, a couple of percent uh, too high. And this means that the destruction of ozone by Pinatubo has actually been somewhat higher than previously reported. It's not catastrophic, it's not a disaster, but it's uh, very definitely uh, about a, per, a, a couple of percent higher than they had thought. And it confirmed Topps' credibility as a serious scientific tool. So much so, NASA have asked if they could use two of MIMS's detectors in a monitoring station in Brazil. But Forrest has wider ambitions for TOPS. He wants to set up a global network of measurement stations. 
that's my goal. And, and one, one important point about this is there are very few ground-based ozone stations in the world, fewer than, a, fewer than a few hundred. And there are very, very few in the equatorial regions or in the, uh, the developing countries. Uh, people simply can't afford Dobson instruments, which are so expensive and there are so few available. Since these could probably be produced or sold for under $1,000, we can get these instruments all around the world in countries that, that simply now cannot afford to measure ozone. And thanks to today's award, a global network may not be too far away. This handyman of genius has succeeded in the professional world of science. At a time of increasing concern for the environment, his project could not be more topical.